and we are officially live broadcasting only on onedealaway.com slash live this is money matters my name is nev and today is an election day that's right i've been missing in action for a couple of days uh for one i just wasn't feeling all that hot uh no not corona <laughs> not corona but i just wasn't feeling all that hot so i said you know what uh take a mental break a sick of it day as i was told to call it when that happens so today we have a very very important episode where we're going to be uh talking a little bit about sort of what's going on in the economy how the election may or may not shift what's happening we're going to take a look at the markets because we haven't looked at it uh last week was very sort of dubious this week started pretty darn well and so i want to take a look at kind of where we are what's happening around the globe so we have some news about the restaurants uh you know closing and more restaurants closing if you can believe it and i'm sure you can because obviously obviously we are having large issues and challenges uh with with the restaurants as we've been expecting it because as i've been saying on this channel is that hey wait you know that's great they're gonna sit outside now that it's july august maybe september but november is here and uh you know i don't know about where you live but here we got our first snow it already melted it's gone uh we got our crazy winds where it's 20 some miles an hour and it's really 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 cold like give you headache kind of cold um so you know and in, in those instances i don't want to sit outside and dine i don't care what kind of tent you have it's drafty okay so this is what we're experiencing this is what we're seeing and so this is the part that we've been expecting to see happen of course europe has been shutting down left side and center um or sideways as i like to call it and uh, that also has an impact and you know could that possibly be coming our way of course today is elections so everybody's holding their breath to see who is going to win we do have uh, multiple people running for president uh contrary to the popular belief that there's only two parties but unfortunately only two parties are getting the face time talk about freedom equality and all kinds of other stuff that is just doesn't seem to be happening so we do have a, a green party that has put in an individual a libertarian party that's put in an individual so if you don't like the two top ones then hey vote for somebody else or or you also have a right not to vote contrary to the popular belief yes you do have a full right to vote or not vote and you know what some people believe that having a new president is going to make a big of a difference some people believe that you know that doesn't really matter who steps in who steps out we are still dealing with the very similar situations all around the world and yes i think president can influence some of the stuff but where we are right now with our financials i don't know that he or she can do that so let's do this Oh my goodness good morning good morning good morning welcome 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 hey want to welcome everybody watching this live on one deal away.com slash live if you are here make sure you sign in so that way you can say hello don't worry signing in is free it doesn't cost you anything and the cool part is you get a free course out of that uh i think that that's awesome but that's just me and of course it's a crypto 101 course in case you're wondering which one so if you're brand new to crypto trying to understand like how do i buy how do i value how do i save and preserve it right what wallets uh you know what is the difference between ether and bitcoin and that kind of stuff that's all in the course and it comes with uh some introduction to technical analysis fundamental analysis and uh i think you're going to really really enjoy it so anyways it is there it is free for you uh, so make sure you sign in say hello i'm gonna do q a at the end of the show as always if you're watching this elsewhere like for example youtube make sure you do me a huge favor smash that subscribe button that button no that button <laughs> it's always on where i am it's located on this end but where you are watching it's located on this end 
So make sure you subscribe, make sure you hit some sort of notification, something so you get notified every time this goes live. And feel free to put in a comment and share this with people you think this is going to be helpful too. All right, so first thing first, let's go in and take a look at the market of what we can expect. So of course, what can we expect? I have no clue. My crystal ball broke years ago. Not a financial advice, not a legal advice, not a medical advice. All right, clearly no advices whatsoever. So now that we've covered that, let's cut into it. Um, okay, so here we go. This is the S&P futures as it is, because you can see they have definitely opened up higher and trading nicely up. Now, this doesn't mean that today's trading session is going to be all up and up. However, there is a very, very, very good potential and probability and possibility that it might translate into the daily thing. And as you can see, here is where we kind of were hitting the slump and we're starting. This is yesterday. So yesterday futures went really nicely, uh, kind of came on down. And uh, here we go. We are starting to uh, trade on up in a positive. So the same story is happening right now with Dow Jones. So Dow Jones actually performed really well yesterday. Um, actually outperformed NASDAQ, if you can believe it. That's right. Blue chip outperformed the tech stocks. Uh, NASDAQ is trading on up. Well, it was. And now it kind of has taken a sharp down. So we'll just see where it's going to turn and how this is going to uh, play out. Um, it's been it's been trading negative, so the, we are not enamored with tech anymore. Clearly, gold has actually the in the futures is also trading on up, and it's still in the green. It's been in the green, so we are at just slightly below 1900 at 1899 and 10 cents. Thank you very much. On a one month though, we are down. So one piece to understand silver same thing it is up five days it's up however on the on the on the one month is up um and uh you know on the six month is down but since august sorry it's up but since august um we are actually down so the high was 29 dollars at 24.9 cents and uh, right now we're 24 dollars 25.5 cents so $5 difference plus minus. So there you go. That's kind of what's happening in there. Treasury yield. So treasury yield is very interesting. So it's kind of gone up um, and then kind of went, you know, down and then up and went down. And uh, so now there's a potential is going to go up right now. We're at 0 0.849. And as you can see in a month, um, you know, it's definitely been going on the upside as well as the six months. So we've had this sort of uh, sideway down kind of thing, um, you know, July into August, and then we have been going on up. Now, why is this important? Well, this is important if you are obviously in bonds. It means that your yield is higher, not that you're going to get rich on 0.849%, uh, but it is going on up. Now, that also means that the price of bonds is going down. But where this really, really, really matters to me, at least, is on the fact that this influences mortgage rates. So I do expect that the interest for mortgages is going to actually start ticking on up if this puppy continues. Of course, on the year, you know, this is where we were and we've kind of hit on down and we're sort of, like I said, we've been sort of going flattish from about April up until August, early September. Um, and then we've kind of hit a slightly higher, been going sideways for most of September. And then we have been climbing in the month of October. So something to pay attention. Uh, volatility index is up over the course of uh, one month on a five day. It's actually hit on kind of up on Wednesday. And it has been kind of coming down since then right now on a day. Um, it's definitely on a down end of things, uh, you know, losing 5.44%. Volatility basically, uh, it's supposed to track like how volatile the market is moving up and down, but it's been really tracking uh, the bear side of things, the negative side of things, if you kind of think about it. And uh, here, here is uh, one of our favorite techs. 
uh, you know, I don't know that it's ours, but I, I know a lot of people have been buying it. Um, so in year to date, this puppy has outperformed everything. So here is January. Here's that February high of like almost, you know, a little bit of a 2000. Then we hit the low of like 1600. And since then in uh, September, we hit the high high of 35.31. Now we're at $3,004. So basically, we've lost about 17% since the high. So here is that high in early September, and it's been going down very, very slowly. Going down on a five-day, it's definitely come down. And on a one-day, well, it opened up higher, and it kind of comes in lower, and then it sort of, in the last minutes, it goes on up. And I'm actually noticing that happening with a lot of stocks where they will gap up or down uh, when they open. And uh, typically then they'll kind of like early morning, they'll go up and do some stuff. And then they sort of go down almost like a, you know, like a, a sugar rush that has, you know, sugar crash, I guess, that has gone down. And then it kind of goes down. And then around two o'clock, it kind of has this like blimp of life comes back down and right around 345 last 15 minutes of trading goes on up and that's definitely been a trend that i have been noticing now switching over to the crypto market what do we see well let me refresh over here so that we are watching at the latest and the greatest of the news and as you can see bitcoin is holding above 13,000, which is really really good it's been trying to break over 14,000 a few times um, you know, kind of hit it, hit it a little bit over it, come back down. So there's a lot of folks, if you consider the on-chain analysis, there's a lot of folks that are in profit. So when they hit that 14,000, they will actually sell. It comes down to about 13.1, 13.2. There's plenty of buyers. And so now we have this beautiful channel, so to speak, that is trading between you know, uh, let's say 13 and $14,000. So you do have a, a about a $1,000 uh, channel that it's been trading in and uh, it's still going on up still performing pretty nicely in seven days it's uh, up 3.5 percent 24 hours it's up almost one percent when we look at the ethereum it is at 380 so it actually has gone down 3.4 percent in seven days and a little bit over one percent 1.1 percent down over the 24 hours but again it's been holding between that 360 370 uh, for about 400 and it's been trading in that range for forever it will kind of come up hit 400 try to break over 400 come right back out at about 370 something 380 and it's been holding pretty steady over there usdt i'm not even going to talk about tether um and because you know it's supposed to be stable coins so not much should be happening um we are seeing some you know a lot of red a lot of red if you kind of look at it hold on Excuse me. So, a uh, lot of red, a lot of red that it's been happening. So, 24 hour period, we do have NMR uh, that is numerator that is basically up 5.2%. Uh, XRP is up 1.5%. Uh, and then Ren BTC 1.3%. And then it kind of goes down from there. So, not a whole lot of winners uh, on the losing end. Ocean is down 10.9%. Uh, and Nexus uh, NXM is down 8.9, Energy Web down 8.7, RSR down 8%. So way more losers, like nothing on the big losing end. On the seven day, Vite, I don't even know what that is. Uh, Vite is up 62.2%. Uh, that's crazy and amazing, but I don't, I don't know what it is. So my apologies for that. Nexo is up 15.8% and then Cello uh, or Cello or I don't know how you call it, uh, Celsius, Celsius Network, my apologies, I don't know why I was going to call it Cello, uh, CEL, Celsius, uh, up 9.6 and then uh, not much, so not a whole lot of winning in the 7 day, on the losing end we have RSR 32.4% down, SNX 29.2% down, uh, YFI 20 9.1% uh, down and this is an interesting one I want to I want to actually check on this one YFI year dot finance uh, you know it's been dumping and I've kind of predicted that that would happen a little while ago and I will show you why hold on 
here here is the reason why let me see if i can get my trusty pen will it work sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't okay it's going to play along um it's going to play along all right so here is what happening see over here this over here this is a shoulder this is a head and this is a shoulder so it's your very very typical shoulder head shoulder pattern and when that happens right when that happens um, it basically is gonna go down at 99.9% .9%. it's not like a foolproof method but more often than not it goes down and you can very clearly see it when it's being pointed out to you so what does that typically mean well typically from the point of the high to wherever the the break line is and this is not you know 100% accurate it's more like this oh my gosh Nev, this is horrible uh, but I think you see the picture so whatever this distance is right over here that is expected to translate to this distance here as well on the downside of the things so if uh, this was you know about 20,000 right so and this went up to 40 so it's supposed to come back basically to uh, zero now it doesn't always play out exactly that way but right now we are just under 10 so we are already already lost thirty thousand dollars in this case scenario right over here and and i believe that we still have some room to go right over here now how much that is anybody's guess but this is what's happening and this is what i have uh predicted and so this is the reason one of the reasons hopefully that you're watching this show and if you're enjoying stuff like this you definitely want to subscribe so you might want to hit it right now and hey let's help other people try to figure out how do i figure these things out by uh hitting the thumbs up and sharing the video so there you go this is what's happening in the world of uh, uh money right We've looked at the charts. Let's look at some of the news of what is going on. And the first bit of news is, well, it's not good news. I'm sorry about that. It has to do with the restaurants. And here's the part that I said, it doesn't really matter who the president is. The restaurants are going down. You know, they can't stop the virus. They can't stop the winter. They don't have that kind of power. And if they did, my gosh, those would be very, very scary people if they can control viruses and cold and everything else. So we uh, basically, uh, here is what's going on, the state of American restaurants by cities or by area. So we're going to look at areas of where the, the restaurants are really suffering. And of course, you're probably going to guess that where it's cold, they suffer the most now. And where it's warm, they suffer the least. And that is absolutely true. So Florida seems to be doing pretty A-OK. -okay. But Florida has also been like very liberal about the closings and everything else. And the weather is nice, so it allows for it. You know, places like San Francisco where everybody's leaving, of course, that's very, very hard. Rain season is coming, so that's going to make it even harder. Uh, places like New York City and Boston, well, I am living right around there. And I will tell you, it's freaking cold. Nobody wants to sit outside and eat. So let's take a look at the article. So 78% of the U.S. restaurants had taken reservations before the pandemic, took reservations again during the week of October. And of course, this is coming from Open Table. And seated diners, another metric provided by Open Table, has dropped to the worst reading since September 19. As of October 31st, the seven day moving average of seated diners was down 44.6% from the same period last year. And you can kind of see where we were sort of, uh, you know, uh, 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 it, it, before the pandemic hit. And then we kind of came back down. And then we had the lockdown. Basically, nobody was dining out. Well, nobody was doing much of anything, right? Then we started to recover. Here's the 4th of July, you know, weekend which was quite lovely then we hit the august they started to go up labor day was really really good everybody was going out there people were pumped then we started to get the spread so we started to come back down we tried to come back and uh here we are here we are right now this is where we sit at uh you know down 44.6 percent 
Based on a broad sample of 20,000 restaurants, most places have offered outside dining for months where inside dining is offered. It comes with limits such as 25 to 50 percent capacity. So you can't go above that. That is really, really rough. So that means if your restaurant is, can seat typically, say, 50 people, you know, you'll be lucky if you can get 25. Right. Uh, more likely case scenario is we're looking at like 12 souls, right? So one large Italian family and you got to shut the place down, right? So that's, that's uh, talk about intimate dining, intimate dining. And at that point, you know, it becomes questionable. Can we even keep this running? And then there's also a problem that I've seen with many places where they like bar is completely shut down. Uh, you know, they may or may not serve booze, which as you may know, if you have been in restaurant business or know anybody who has, Typically, the booze is what actually uh, gets things going. And speaking of the booze, um, it turns out that not only are we drinking more, but uh, uh, the the liquor businesses uh, are the most profitable businesses out there during this whole shutdown because people are not going outside. So they're ordering food and they order their booze. And so now they're eating at home. So that's kind of what we're seeing happening. Tourism, of course, is huge hit. Nobody's traveling. And even if you want to travel, you know, you might be able to travel here within within the United States and stuff. But even then, you kind of have to quarantine, you know, so two weeks here, two weeks there, uh, you know, one too many two week time periods that most of us don't have. Um, some of us might be lucky where you can work remotely. So potentially you could be going somewhere, quarantine for two weeks, work while you're there, you know, go and play around while working maybe during daytime or evening hours and then come back home again, work for, uh, you know, uh, uh, two weeks while quarantining. So that's one piece. International travel is all but dead. Uh, I have been trying to travel internationally for months now and it's just not happening. And I'll be very honest, uh, you know, the planes are flying, right? They're mostly empty. Uh, they're super, super cheap. Where I struggle with it personally, I will tell you, where I would love to be able to go is visit my family. As you know, they are in Europe. Where I would love to go is to Europe and visit them. The parts that I am challenged with is that I would have to have a face mask on for well over 24 hours, right? I mean, think about it. By the time you enter the airport and, you know, get onto the plane, then you have to sit on the plane for the whole thing, then get onto the airport. And if you have multiple legs, that time definitely expands. So let's say on average 24 hours of a face mask, which does not sound all that appealing like at all. So that's problem number one. Problem number two is that when I get there, then it's two weeks and I have to quarantine, uh, you know, away from my family because, you know, if I picked up something, I definitely don't want to give it to them. So that means that, you know, I kind of have to suffer alone, as they say, for two weeks, knowing that they're like right there, I can reach them, but I can't. So that's where my challenges kind of come in. And then, of course, on the way back, I got to repeat the whole thing. So that's the hard piece. So there we go. The international mass tourism is uh, basically essentially shut down. So here we go. What's happening on the West Coast and Hawaii? Seattle, San Francisco, and Honolulu are performing the worst, uh, ranging 78 to 77 percent of the seated diners uh, is basically down. LA, Portland, and Phoenix are in that high 50 to mid 60 range. And then you have Vegas, San Diego, and Denver that are in the 30 to 40 range uh, piece. And you can take a look at this chart right over here to be able to understand kind of what's going on and where things are. Then we have Midwest. And Midwest seems to be doing uh, better than, than the West Coast with uh, 50 to 75% uh, closure. So uh, there we go. 52% down in Cincinnati, 75 in Chicago, and then everything else in between. So we're talking between, you know, uh, uh, you know, 60 to to uh, you know, 75% uh, down. So that's that's really rough. East Coast, the biggest downturn is in Philly, from high in early October of negative 50 to the low on October 31st of negative 71. New York City, the number of seated diners was down 79% from a year ago. 
and at the top was Pittsburgh at negative 57. So as you can see, you know, uh, Boston, Baltimore, Philly, Pittsburgh, Washington, they're all basically down and winter is coming and it's here and it's really, really cold. And like I said, it we already had a winter storm uh, a couple of days ago and, uh, you know, it's been dropped super, uh, super low with the crazy wind yesterday that, you know, it made it really, really chilly. Tampa is down south. Tampa is at negative 17%, the best reading of any cities covered. New Orleans, where Cedar Diners are down 68% from a year ago. And as you can see, they're doing much, much better down south. So uh, it makes sense because most of these places are much more liberal about the, the seating and dining and stuff. And the outdoor seating is much more feasible. Um, you know, it's beautiful in in uh, Texas and Florida and even Arizona, um, you know, so why Phoenix is suffering, I, I don't know, uh, but it's beautiful this time of the year over there, you know, like sitting outside is where you want to be, uh, you know, in October, November. Uh, restaurants are experimenting with tent structures and big awnings and whatnot, and they've been buying patio heaters, which like so many pandemic items, are now in short supply. And the prices have gone up for these bad boys as well. So that's what's happening, sort of the big picture of the things. Now, here in the new, uh, in the Northeast, I was going to call it New England, but Northeast section, we do have Friendly's, uh, which is the uh, iconic restaurant chain that just filed for bankruptcy. So Friendly's uh, restaurant is, uh, became the latest dining institution to go bankrupt amid the pandemic. They filed for Chapter 11, and they are planning to sell for $2 million. Estimated liabilities are 50 to 100 millions, and estimated assets are 1 to 10 millions. So they are basically looking to get out, and not just are they filing for Chapter 11 protection, right? But they're basically also like, hey, you know, if we could sell this thing for $2 million, done right and so maybe they will restructure it and stuff and you might be thinking to yourself like who is crazy enough to buy this thing right because you're looking at liabilities 5200 million so you're going to pay 2 million and get 100 million in liabilities that doesn't make sense that doesn't make sense they will likely restructure it in the whole like uh, you know re everything deal now is today the best time to own a restaurant no probably not Will it be a good idea in, you know, a few years? Potentially. So this could be somebody who has substantial amount of money and is looking to basically, you know, buy it. Will they buy it for $2 million? I don't know. I don't know. I, I wouldn't be shocked if they negotiate and buy it for $1 million or less and then also renegotiate on the whole liabilities and eliminate them completely. So that's just kind of how I think about the whole thing of what I think might happen. So now it's time to enter into the world of markets and what is going on. So will the markets be punched in the face? And uh, you might have heard that there are many people that are sort of betting on one side of things. And nowadays when I go to like a uh, YouTube and Facebook and stuff like trading is the new hot thing everybody wants to trade everybody wants to learn how to trade everybody is on the equities and looking of how to make money and stuff uh, without realizing that a uh, traders well over 96 percent of them actually lose money uh, trading uh, many of them actually go bankrupt so it's only a few 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 that make it and it will take you about good four years to learn how to do that because it's definitely a bit of an art a lot of science and a whole lot of mindset so nobody's going to be able to teach you how to become a master trader in you know one 30-day challenge or course like it's not gonna happen you might get some solid foundation but after that everything you do is going to be out there you doing things so you have to put in some money aside knowing fully that you're going to lose it while you're also learning um, the biggest piece that is going to be is your mental piece that you learn everything. Then you got to go out there. Then you got to analyze. And I always suggest to folks, whatever you do, whether you're going to trade or invest, do it on paper first. Paper trade, paper invest first to see if you would have made the right call. 
Uh, but many people don't do that. They go out there, they open brokerage account and just go bananas and get themselves wrecked in the process. So a warning that a market is perhaps due consensus going into a fragile fundamental and technical period for the market. The market is in a precarious position where the slightest rate of change, bad news, could mean a substantial correction. Market participants are fully bought onto one or more of the following ideas. The blue wave is reflationary, meaning we are going to go up. There was fiscal, fiscal failure, but it will come eventually. Vaccine news can be only positive. COVID is Europe's problem. Strong economic rebound in the U.S. coming out of the spring will continue without problems. And market is piling onto the reflation trades and continue to hold them. VIX speculative position is down and it's down into the extremes. As you can see, this is where we were in 2010, 2011, 2012, 2013, 14, 15, 16. We went up higher, right? And, uh, you know, we had a nice sort of tick up in 2018. And then take a look at what happened, right? We were kind of here and now it's like, I mean, basically bottom, bottom. Uh, so if we kind of hit the bottom right over here, that's going to mean a triple bottom, which means this puppy is going to the moon very potentially. Um, S&P speculative positioning is, again, going into the highs and the longs. Everybody is betting that the market is going to go up. Net speculative uh, positioning across the um, eight-month liquid currency futures is basically down and people are still shorting the dollar right shorting the long end of the u.s rate curve everybody believes that that's not going to happen the market is very clearly tilted to one side participants are expecting higher equities higher rates lower dollar lower volatility and lower volume of volatility the market believes that either a there is non-positive news coming or b that we will be able to look through any near-term negative news and uh, uh, you know it's basically sunshine and rainbows as they say so here it is as it peaks uh, so he talks about the gamma over here when it comes to the the options and what's going on and basically they're saying that there is a hundred foot wave of call options meaning everybody's bullish you buy call options when you believe that the market is going to go on up these call coupled with other position makes profiting from reflation increasingly difficult the charts are the clearest indicators of warning signs that a reflation hiccup could occur so he then takes a look at a few different charts so semiconductors broken uptrend possible development of the most classic head and shoulder topping pattern and uh, we just saw the head and shoulders when i was talking about yfi um, and so here we go this is shoulder head shoulder boom shoulder head he's calling for potential shoulder over here and then again boom then we go into the john deere not tech uh, but construction equipment broken uptrend potential forming classic head and shoulder again shoulder head potential shoulder and then we are down transportation uh so transports other potential head and shoulder as well happening you can see it right over here there's the neckline and then boom it happens housing another broken trend and potential head and shoulder top so that's another piece to kind of really pay attention to and the part with the housing that does have a potential to actually turn down is as we were looking at the the 10 year treasury a few moments ago um, you did notice that there was sort of like it's coming on up which means mortgages will go up so prices have gone up now the price of borrowing money is going to go up and small supply the only thing that that could spell is turn back around so we could be seeing a, a correction starting to happen in 2021. So there we go. That's kind of where we could see things happening. Momentum, think Tesla double top, broken trend, and MACD about to flip negative. So he's saying 140 must hold or momentum equities will break down. So you can see top, top, and typically when you see a double top, right, happen, um, it's a very strong signal that will go up. If you see a triple top, it's almost like a guarantee that it's going to go down. Again, it's not a guarantee, but it has potential. And then, of course, MACD potentially turning negative. 
which means it will continue to go down. There's a coordinated signaling across all sectors of potential topping pattern developing. All reflation uptrends are over. Previous fundamental narratives will not drive price action going forward. While Biden winning the presidency may lead to fiscal stimulus in 2021, the market would have to sit through a painful period. So there's some of the things that he's outlining that could happen. So no fiscal in the lame duck session, right? Which I've been talking about on this channel already. Uh, potential for tax loss selling into the year end, especially of tech stocks, which have gone up significantly. Um, potentially the Biden uh, and the, the, the GOP Senate get elected. So that's the worst election outcome for risk assets, right? So everybody's betting that it's going to be all blue or all red. But what if it's a mixed thing and you have blue on one and red on one and nothing is going to happen. And so there's going to be blocks and problems all the way through. Delayed and or negative uh, news on the vaccine, which could also very potentially happen. Uh, second wave hitting the U.S. and fa forcing the shutdowns in the U.S. We're seeing it happening already in Europe. We do know that Europe is a few weeks, maybe about a month, month and a half ahead of us. They just started to do that, so we could potentially see this coming into the U.S. And we're seeing some of the areas already starting to do that and basically talking about, ah, 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 you better behave or we're shutting it down, right? So uh, the most important, yields go too high. Risk paragraph funds could de-risk if equities aren't rising procurrently. Higher mortgage yields coupled with increased home prices due to higher demand plus input costs could hit the housing market. Something lumber is signaling to us, and this is the part that I was just telling you about. Economic cycles have been replaced with a debt cycle. When nominal yields rise above the level of growth, it increases at risk asset volatility every single time. So this is the part where I was saying VIX could go through the roof, uh, which means that not only are you going to make money on the VIX, but also the stocks are going to come down. When UST the Treasury interest payments plus entitlements become greater than the tax receipts, the US fiscal Ponzi situation becomes unsustainable. If the market price is in a blue wave, which force a risk parity liquidation, for example, yields could climb too high in the near term as there are liquidity void right now with the Fed on the sideline until December and no fiscal until March 2021 at the earliest. And we talked about it even on this channel. I was saying nothing between February, maybe March, right? Like so maybe, you know, Valentine's Day might be the earliest just because of, you know, if if the if Biden gets elected. Right. And let's assume everything is blue, uh, you know. You got to sit and you got to wait for him to get basically indoctrinated, as they say, or sworn in. And then, you know, things can begin. So we're going to be sitting in a few months of nothingness. Um, and that's that's spelling a lot of trouble. Economic cycle have been replaced by a debt cycle. We're coming out of Fed neutral COVID risk increasing like March, which has moved into the world of negative debt dynamic regime. Uh, next step is uh, for the Fed to take easing to the next level. So here we go. We have the positive debt dynamic, growth, uh, debt GDP lower, uh, funding issues tame, USD depreciates, uh, the dollar depreciates, commodities rise, inflation with firms, stocks are rallying. Then you have the Goldilocks season with Fed moves neutral, rate hikes considered, price uh, cut price out, tightens liquidity. So here we go where we are kind of getting into negative D lead debt dynamics oh my gosh i can't speak growth rolls over debt gdp higher funding issues emerge u.s dollar rises commodities decline inflation moderates and stocks volatile and then we have low inflation which basically says fed pivots dovish cuts rates injects liquidity rates fall and then we kind of repeat this whole cycle again november could be extremely poor for risk asset performance if yield climb too high so putting all this together, positioning sentiment technicals all jibes with the idea that the market is more susceptible to negative news flow, less positive news flow. So they will react more to the negative than to the positive. Several reasonable fundamental scenario that could cause a significant inflation correction. Positive news need to come fast and we don't even know if they're going to come fast or not. And we do not think that this is March 2.0. 
any correlation will be shallower as positioning is slightly less extreme. VIX is 35 now versus 15 in February. Central banks are ready to act and the world is better placed to deal with COVID. Everyone has a plan until you get punched in the mouth, as the Mike Tyson said. And what they're saying is there's something winding up to punch the market in the mouth. And my question is, are you ready for that to happen or not? Across the pond, we do know that Goldman and Deutsche Bank are ordering staff to stay at home as COVID-19 uh, is exploding. So, of course, they basically said essential only. They're starting to lower this down. And as you know, even in September, when they were trying to bring more traders in, more bankers in, uh, they started to get outbreaks of COVID on their trading floors. So that paused things down. Now with the UK shutting down, Spain's already shutting down, France is shutting down, Germany is shutting down, Europe is shut it down. Uh, that they are basically st starting to see that that second wave we're probably going to see it here in the US as well and right before that if you will recall JP Morgan uh, CEO was uh, J Jamie Dimon was publicly leaking the research from the bank in criticizing the work from home as a drain of creative intelligence uh, displayed by the bank's younger analysts so he was basically saying, no, 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 I got to bring all of them here because it's a problem. They are not performing well and we are not happy about that piece. So there you go. That's it for today. I do want to thank you very much for watching this stuff. Make sure you give me a thumbs up if you haven't already. Sorry to ask multiple times, but hey, beggars can be choosers. You know what I mean? So give me what you give me. Uh, do subscribe, do smash the notification button. If you're here watching this live, we're about to go into the live Q&A. If you're watching this elsewhere, well, then I will see you tomorrow. Until then, stay forever money blessed. And do remember, you are only one deal away.